Great action. That's what we're going for. The West Wing Week. Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But first, a brief message from foodsafety.gov. Hello, I'm Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack. This summer, do your best to keep food out of the danger zone. Keep cold food cold, below 40 degrees and hot foods hot, by cooking thoroughly and serving right away. This week, June 25th to July 1st, or Home of the Kringle. On Friday morning, June 25th, President Obama made a statement on the South Driveway about the Wall Street reform bill currently making its way through Congress. We are poised to pass the toughest financial reforms since the ones we created in the aftermath of the Great Depression. Early this morning, the House and Senate reached an agreement on a set of Wall Street reforms that represents 90 percent of what I proposed when I took up this fight. Later that afternoon, the president left for Muskoka, Ontario for the G8 summit to address a range of global issues. Upon arrival, he was greeted by Canadian Prime Minister Harper and the delegations immediately got down to the important business at hand, discussing economic issues such as global development and a need for greater accountability. On Saturday, June 26th, the G8 summit took on some issues of international security, including discussions about Iran, North Korea, and the situation in Afghanistan. President Obama then traveled to stormy Toronto for the G20, where he highlighted another area of international cooperation by giving a ride to newly elected Prime Minister of the UK, David Cameron. The President then spent the afternoon in bilateral meetings. Mr. President, may I please introduce His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Korea. How are you? Affirming our alliance with South Korea, strengthening our relationship with China, and taking time to settle up on a bet with Prime Minister Cameron about the U.S.-U.K. World Cup soccer match. Since it ended in a tie, uh, we are exchanging, uh, paying off our debts at the same time. Uh, this is Goose Island 312 beer from my hometown of Chicago. And uh, David, I understand this, this is... This is Hob Goblin from the Witchwood Brewery, which is with me in my conditions. Um, and so uh, I advised him that in America, we drink our beer cold. So he has to put this in the refrigerator before, uh, before he drinks it, but I think he will find it uh, outstanding. And uh, I'm happy to give that a shot, although I will not drink it more. In a brief moment between two meetings, the president was able to catch some of the U.S. World Cup soccer match against Ghana. Go! Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Take a shot! The U.S. went on to lose a close game 2-1. to one. On Sunday, June 27th, the G20 summit was in full swing, with President Obama attending plenary sessions focused on the global coordination for economic recovery. If we act in a coordinated manner and avoid pitfalls, this could mean global output raised by $4 trillion, the creation of 52 million new jobs, and 90 million people lifted out of poverty. After taking part in the formal leader's portrait, or family photo, the president hunkered down for more bilaterals, highlighting America's cooperation with Indonesia, our strategic partnership with India, and celebrating the 50th anniversary of our alliance with Japan. On his way to a press conference, President Obama ran into Prime Minister Harper. Well, thanks for your hospitality. Well, thanks for all your help. Good, good. No, I thought, I thought uh, you did great work. Uh, I think the results were good. So. The president then spoke to the press on the accomplishments of the summit and the role the U.S. will take. In the United States, we are committed, above all, to leading by example. And because of the steps that we've taken to get our economy moving, we are growing again, and this growth is beginning to translate into job creation. Then it was time to leave for sunny Washington, D.C. On Monday, June 28th, with the flag over the White House flying at half-staff for the passing of Senator Robert Byrd, the President held a series of meetings. That afternoon, he met with the winners of the 2010 Math Counts National Competition in the Oval Office. I've been putting a lot of emphasis on math and science education because how well we do as a country is going to depend on you know, how well young people like you do uh, on math and science. Next time uh, Malia or Sasha have math homework, I'm going to call you up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay? Is that a deal? All right. The president, photographer Pete Souza, and the mathletes then put right. their math skills to practical we'll use. Two, two of you on each side. Of the well, we got the coach too here. Well, three on one side, two on the other. There you okay. go. Hey, that's all the math. So that was a math problem. <laughs> <laughs> all right, come on. On Tuesday, June 29th, the president met with his economic team and chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, Ben Bernanke, 
to be briefed on the economic recovery. We share the view that uh, the economy uh, is strengthening, that uh, we are into recovery, that it's actually led by some interesting sectors like manufacturing that we haven't seen in quite some time. President Obama also met with a bipartisan group of senators in the cabinet room to discuss the need to pass energy and climate legislation this year, an effort he believes will not only involve action by the government, but an effort from the whole nation to change the way we use and produce energy. Later, the president welcomed King Abdullah to the White House, still in the hemisphere after the G20 in Toronto. They discussed a range of issues, including the Middle East peace process, the situation in Afghanistan, and our continued cooperation against al-Qaeda. On behalf of the American people, welcome. Uh, we appreciate your friendship, uh, and we appreciate your good counsel, and look forward to continuing to work together to strengthen uh, the strong bonds between our two countries. On Wednesday, June 30th, President Obama traveled to Racine, Wisconsin, where he grabbed a local pastry called a Kringle from o h Bakery before holding a town hall meeting to discuss the state of the economy and the usual posturing that comes with doing business back in Washington. The leader of the Republicans in the House said that financial reform was like, I'm quoting here, using a nuclear weapon to target an ant. That's what he said. He, he, he compared the financial crisis to an ant. Uh, this is the same financial crisis that led to the loss of nearly 8 million jobs. Same crisis that cost people their homes, their life savings. I, 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 he can't be that out of touch. On Thursday, President Obama's motorcade weaved through D.C. to American University where he delivered remarks on comprehensive immigration reform, explaining the broken system we currently have in place and proposing a new direction. Now, stopping illegal immigration must go hand in hand with reforming our creaky system of legal immigration. Later that afternoon, the president signed the Iran sanctions bill into law, imposing the toughest set of sanctions ever put in place on Iran. In the entire world, there is only one signatory to the MPT only one that has been unable to convince the International Atomic Energy Agency that its nuclear program is for peaceful purposes. One nation, and that nation is Iran. To find out more information on any of these topics or to see complete videos of these events, go to whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing Week. By the way, I have a math question for you. Okay, what's the math question? Okay, this is called the Oval Office. Yes. Right? Is it an oval? Or you want me to give you like what's the diameter of it or something? No. Where are the foci of the oval? See, <laughs> don't embarrass me. <laughs>